right, anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started just because we have limited time for today's presentation. Um, and just to start off, uh, I'll let you know that my name is Chrissy. I'm a career consultant here at the uh, Career Connection Center here at um, Denton campus at TWU. And um, I primarily work with College of Nursing and College of Professional Education students. Um, but all of us kind of do these presentations and, and cover all sorts of uh, topics throughout the semester. And today I'm gonna be covering um, resume pitfalls. So common like mistakes or common problems that you might make or might see on a resume. Um, so I wanna start out with just the most common resume mistakes. And so these are just some of the most common things that we see um, when we you know, uh, are looking at resumes from our students or um, common things that you might see just out in the world of work. Um, the number one thing is that oftentimes people use an objective statement instead of a, prof a profile or summary statement. Um, that's an objective statement used to be pretty popular, but it's not so much anymore. Um, and currently the difference between those is that an objective statement is you're listing sort of in a paragraph at the top, um, what you want or like what you're looking for in a job. And your summary statement is um, also a paragraph at the top, but explains more of uh, why you might be a good fit for the job that you're applying to. So that's the difference between those two. Um, I won't go into too much detail on each of these. Um, I do have some topics a little bit later that I am gonna go into more detail in, but I did wanna mention that we do have a really great worksheet on the Career Connections website under our resources tab that goes over exactly how to write a really good summary statement. And that's also something that your career consultants can help you with too. Um, but moving down that list, um, you also want to make sure that you don't put unrelated work experience on your resume. So for instance, I, um, I'm a counseling psychology PhD um, student right now here at TWU. And before I did grad school, I did almost 10 years in the retail industry. And there are some times where I might include that on a resume and sometimes when I wouldn't, um, depending on the type of job that I am applying to. So if I'm applying strictly to a counseling job, I will probably leave off my retail experience because it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with counseling and one-on-one -on -one clients. Although there is some argument that you might be able to say, um, talk about your transferable skills. So when I was in sales, I talked a lot to people and I was really good at persuasion and, you know, explaining um, the details about a product or something like that. And those can be used in a counseling resume as well. Those are transferable skills that are good in counseling fields, but you really have to kind of be um, a little bit um, decisive on what you feel like is relevant and what you feel like might not be. And that is kind of different for each job that you apply to. So um, you want to just be specific and be um, selective on what kinds of work experience you want to include, because some of us have really long lists of places that we've worked at. And um, that goes into one of the other um, one of the other bullet points on here is the top on the right that too long or too short. So say you have like 30 jobs that you've worked in the past. Um, you might not want to list all 30 of those jobs on there. And if you do, it's going to be way too long. So really just include the relevant work experience for the job that you're applying to. Um, another one of these common mistakes is not enough detail on your resume. So um, most of the time we suggest that you put three to five bullet points underneath each job description. Um, so when you list your job, you wanna put three to five bullet points describing um, your skills and what you did at that job and your professional accomplishments at that position. Um, oftentimes people will either totally leave out a description of a job and just list like where they worked and what their job title was. That's not enough detail. Um, but then there's also too much detail where you can put, you know, 10 or 15 bullet points on your resume under each job, and that's gonna make it way longer than two pages um, front and back. So, or excuse me, one page front and back. So you really wanna be careful with how much detail you put in there, not too much or not too little. Um, it can be sometimes hard to decide. So again, that's one of the things that the career consultants can help you with um, when we do resume reviews um, and you can set up an appointment for that. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, Another thing that we commonly see is that people list their professional references on their resume. That's not something that you do so much anymore. It used to be common um, 
I don't really know when or <laughs> my instinct is to say like back in the day. Um, but when I was much younger, probably 10 years ago or so, you would list your prof professional references on your resume. And that's just not so much something that people do anymore. Um, a lot of time, or at least in, in my opinion, I think people leave those off now because, um, you know, if you're applying to a lot of jobs and you're sending out your your personal contact information, like your home address or the phone numbers of your professional references, and you don't get those jobs, then you've shared all this personal information with a company that has nothing to do with you in your future if you don't get that job. So I think it's just more concerns with privacy, but it's also just a thing that takes up space on your resume that you don't really need to provide unless you're like at the interview stage and they're requesting, you know, to, to take a look at um, references who can back up what you You've listed on your resume, but uh, definitely not something that you should list on your resume um, just outright before you, um, like as you're applying to the job. Um, another thing to avoid is listing irrelevant skills. A lot of people have a full skills section on their resume. That can sometimes be good and sometimes not so much. Um, I would say if you have, um, if you're applying to a job that's very specific and has very specific technical skills that you need and are required to get that job, then maybe a skill section would be necessary where you put very specific, like maybe programs that you use or operating systems that you worked with or um, like, I'm thinking of, of like nurses, like clinical um, skills that you have, like taking vitals and stuff like that, or maybe CPR certification. Those are skills that you do want to list on your resume. However, if you're just talking about basic skills, like you understand and can use Microsoft Word, that's really not something that you need on your resume. And again, it's just kind of a, a thing that takes up space. So don't list the irrelevant skills, list only skills that you are really relevant to the job that you're applying to. Um, another thing, and I've kind of gone into this several times already, but you don't want to send out the same resume for every application that you put in. Um, you want to tailor your resume to the specific job that you're applying to. And so that means listing the specific relevant jobs, listing specific relevant skills to each position that you're applying for. So if you're applying to a bunch of different kinds of jobs, do not send the same resume to all of them. Because if you tailor your resume, then you're going to look like a better fit for that job specifically. And it's going to show the employer that you did your research, that you know what they're looking for. Um, and so that's an important part too. You also just want to generally make sure that you don't have outdated or missing contact information. Make sure you've got your phone number on there, a good professional email address, which is one of the other bullet points I'll go into as well. Um, and uh, so phone number and email. I usually also put the city and state that I live in, but I don't put my full address. They don't need that until you're signing the paperwork for that job. Um, and just make sure that it's up to date. It's not an old email or an old telephone number because you want to make sure if they do want to reach out to you, they can get a hold of you. Um, already went over too long and too short. Another really important thing is uh, checking your grammar and formatting. That's a thing that I, I really enjoy doing for the resumes that I get with my students. Um, I'm a bit of a, a a perfectionist, so I'm really strict on the formatting and the grammar that I use in resumes. And so um, I look at that very detailed and very closely when someone sends me a resume. But if you're not used to doing that, you might not, um, you might miss it um, or like make a small mistake. And sometimes it doesn't matter how many times you proofread your resume, you still are going to miss something. So having another pair of eyes on it, even if you think it looks perfect, is always a good idea. So again, um, career counselors can help you take a look at those. Um, I mentioned a few minutes ago, unprofessional email addresses. So I want to share with you all, I think you might think this is funny, but um, I created my first email address when I was in like the fifth grade, I think. And at the time, Austin Powers was really popular. I don't know if any of you know that movie or have remember it at all, but my first email address was obehave2005 at yahoo.com. I do not suggest <laughs> that you use that on your resume. I can't tell you right now, I can't recall whether or not I did or not, but <laughs> I ended up creating um, a, a just like a christian.meek at gmail.com. First and last name, period in between, super simple, and that is my business email. Or you can use your TWU email if you want them to know that you're a student or um, are maybe applying to an on-campus job. Um, so that's just kind of like a, a subtle indication that you're already a student at TWU. Um, but don't use your personal email. Don't use, you know, anything that has like a, a screen name. It, it just needs to be like your name or like 
uh, something very simple and very professional. Um, let's see, don't include salary information. A lot of people do this and, oh, <laughs> I just saw Angela's comment here. I've got the chat box up here. Uh, what does it say? Angelina Hufflepuff, yay, Hufflepuff. I'm a Ravenclaw. <laughs> um, however, I do not have Ravenclaw in any of my screen names. But anyway, yeah, our first emails are always kind of silly, right? Um, back, to the, <laughs> back to the presentation. Um, salary requests. So it is important to know what salary you're looking for and how to negotiate your salary. We actually do an entire workshop on that. I'm not sure when it is this semester, but it should be on our events page. Um, however, you don't want to put your salary requests on your resume because sometimes just putting that number out there can get your resume thrown out. The employer might have like a particular budget that they may have a little wiggle room on, but if you put your number on there and you're expecting to get that number and they can't meet that requirement, your resume might be out just because of that. So you want to make sure you don't include salary requests. Um, salary negotiation is something that you do um, after the interview process when you're negotiating like benefits for the job, what you know, what you expect to make. And there's, again, a whole workshop series on that, that um, it's just called the AAUW Smart Start Salary Negotiation, something to that effect. Um, but yeah, it should be on our events page, but um, not on the resume. Uh, also, using jargon. So my best um, description of this kind of comes from my own experience with this. Um, I am, so I mentioned earlier, I'm a PhD student in counseling psychology here at TWU, and um, there are some like abbreviations that we use in our field, um, specifically, here I'll type them in the chat box, it's DX, SX, and HX. And all of those things are usually pretty identifiable to people who are in my profession. However, if I'm applying to a job outside of my profession or that's not like directly related to my profession, none of those people are gonna know what those mean. Uh, by the way, they mean diagnosis, symptoms, and history. Um, and it's just shorthand for some of the things that we talk about in my career field specifically. Um, but you wanna be careful with that on any resumes that you're using, especially if you're applying to jobs outside of your field. Don't use jargon, don't use professional language that everyone can't understand. If you do wanna talk about something specific to your field that you think might be helpful, just use the entire word or like spell out abbreviations and explain what that thing might be so that somebody who might not know what that is can at least understand that part of your resume, but you just want to be careful with that. Um, also listing hobbies. Hobbies is a great thing to um, share with an employer, maybe in an interview. Um, that's something that a lot of employers ask, like, what do you do outside of work? What do you do for fun? Just to get to know you, see if you're a good fit with their team and, you know, a good personality fit. But this is something that you don't really need on your resume and also can get your resume thrown out. Say somebody um, looks at your resume and you have golfing on there and that person has an uncle that was a golfer that was really, really mean to them. You don't know <laughs> what kinds of associations that person is going to have with the skills that you list or with almost anything that you list on a resume that's more personal. So you want to just be kind of careful about what you put on your resume in terms of um, hobbies or any other sort of unrelated to the job information. Uh, and the last thing that's a common mistake or a common thing that people do is adding a photo to your resume. One thing that you really want to be careful of is that having a photo on your resume leaves space for people to make assumptions about you. If you think about, um, it could be the color of your skin, it could be the way you cut your hair, it could be the color of your hair. I had purple hair for a long time. Um, and so that's going to be an assumption that somebody makes about me that you don't really know is going to be positive or negative. Um, so really including a photo on your resume can be kind of dicey and risky. Um, and it gives, again, the opportunity for that employee employer to make assumptions about you or to express their discrimination towards you before they even consider you as a candidate and that might get your resume thrown out. So you want to be careful about that. If you really want them to see what you look like and maybe see that you might be a good fit, you know, based on whatever they might see in a picture of you, you can put your LinkedIn um, profile on there. I do that. I put my LinkedIn profile link uh, just on the top in my uh, contact information section. Um, and that way people know like, you know, if they don't like a picture of me, then I'm probably not going to want to work with them. Um, but again, it's not something that you want to put on your resume. But if you want your your face out there and your professional, like attached to your professional history, you can put it on your LinkedIn page. 
Anyway, any questions about just most common mistakes before I kind of move into some of the more like nuanced stuff? Um, I do have the chat box up, so I'll just give you all a second or two. Oh my God, it is so fast. These things are only 20 minutes long. I have to wrap up in three minutes. I don't know if we're gonna make it y'all. <laughs> Actually, I think in that case, I will not pause for questions. I wanna make sure that we get to all of our topics. So let me jump into the other questions. If you do have a question, um, put it in the chat box. I'll try to get to it or uh, attach your email to it and I will send you an email answer if I can. Um, but the other things that people commonly make mistakes for on, um, on resumes are how do I explain a gap in my resume? So like time off, we all know with the pandemic, a lot of us lost our jobs. There's also the great resignation, lots of people leaving their jobs, you know, for better experiences in work. So that's a common problem that we see or have seen recently. Also, how do I write up homemaking or parenting or unpaid work on a resume? You absolutely can do that. I'm going to tell you how. Um, and then also, how do I, if I want to, discuss religi religious or political involvement on my resume? So this is something that can come up in like your volunteering section or um, maybe a job that you actually have that's like at a church or through like a political party that is a good experience you want to talk about, but you may not want to self-identify um, those like, you know, controversial topics about yourself. So we're going to go into all of these. First is gaps. So... I want to tell you a bit of a story, but I don't know if we have time for it. So I think I'm probably going to just be as brief as possible. I left my job. And this is something that actually happened and is uh, what happened for a gap in one of my employment, um, in my employment history. So I um, had a new manager at a bank that I was working at who refused to work with my schedule while I was in grad school. And I had to go to my classes. Grad school was number one. That job was not number one. So I had to leave that job. And then I was unemployed until March the next year where I took a job at a place called Torrid, which is a clothing store, which I loved. And I love the clothing and I love the disc count. However, um, I have a back injury, so I can't stand up on my feet for six hours at a time. And I didn't realize it was that bad until I got the job, which left me with only staying at that job for about two months before I had to leave. I was forced to leave for health reasons. Um, I did get hired a couple of months later, uh, but there was a six month gap in my employment history because I left off Torrid um, because it wasn't really relevant to anything I was applying to. And so it looked like I did not work in, from December to June the next year. Um, and so I want to talk to you about how you can put that on your resume and how you can explain that to an employer. Here's what you do. First, you say what you did. So on my resume, I put something like, I was focusing on classes while searching for employment that fit my class schedule. That way I can explain exactly why I left my job in December because I wasn't able to work uh, in that job with the schedule that they were offering me. Um, and I also let them know like, you know, school is important to me. So this is gonna be a priority on my list. If it's not a priority for you or if you can't work with me, then we're not gonna work out. And so it, it kind of tells them whether I'm a fit or not for that job that I'm applying to. Also, you wanna determine which jobs to include. I mentioned to you that I did not put Torrid on my resume after that. I was applying for student assistantships and you know, having a retail experience is good. However, just two months in one position left a space where I knew I was gonna have to explain why I only was there for two months. And I didn't really feel like disclosing that I had a physical disability um, in my interviews coming up. So I chose to leave it off and just say that I worked on classes and that's perfectly fine to do. Um, list years versus months is another strategy that you can do. So um, I put just a, a quick, uh, example here. So February, so in terms of this versus that, February 2017 to December 2018 versus just the years 2017 to 2018. Um, or if it's the same year and you only worked a couple of months in that job, no one's going to be able to tell if you put 2019 to 2019 if it was May to June or January to December. They don't know. And so that's something that you'll have the opportunity to explain in the interview and that gives you a little bit of time. Um, and it means that hopefully they won't throw out your resume automatically. Um, and then you also want to list the reason for the gap as a job if you can. So say you have a gap in work because you're caregiving an ill family member or because you have to take care of your kiddos, you can't go to daycare because COVID is a thing. Um, or you're a full-time student and you have to take some time off. Um, please make sure your, uh, your mics are muted for me, please. Um, but yeah, so you can also list the reason for a gap as a job. And I'm actually gonna talk about that next. 
By the way, I'm aware that we're pretty much out of time for this session, and I'm so sorry if you have to go back to classes. Um, we are recording this, so I'm going to finish the presentation. If you have to leave and miss the rest of it, um, we're going to upload it onto YouTube, so you'll be able to watch the rest of it later. Apologies for I've prepared way too much information for this 20 minute segment of time. Anyway, let me get back into this again. You'll have access to the recording later um, or email me if you need the link to that YouTube video. So listing a gap on your job. Also, um, a lot of times you want to yeah, have a nice week. Oh, thanks, Prathy. Um, so bye, uh, everyone. Bye. <laughs> um, so unpaid work. These are things like internship, caregiving, cleaning is unpaid work, transportation. <laughs> different places is unpaid work, um, repairs for your home. If you're a homemaker, you're going to be like, uh, you're going to be making repairs in your home. Uh, yes, Tina, I will make sure to email you. Um, laundry is even unpaid work. Not everybody has to do laundry. These are all things that might you might do in your home that you don't get paid for, but a lot of people in the world pay other people to do those things. So if you can, try and list this on your resume as a thing that you've done. That's what's taken up your time if you have a gap in your uh, work history. Um, adding unpaid work can be as simple as making a list of transferable skills based on the work that you're doing and then writing it up just like a paid position. Um, this is a list of, un of uh, transferable skills that you have access to on our website as well. But let me show you what this looks like. So if, for instance, you're um, spending your time homemaking and that's what you've done during that time off that is um, the, uh, uh, is the pay is the gap in your employment. You can list that as if it was a job because it was, you were doing work that entire time. You just happened to not get paid for it, unfortunately. Um, but that's why I have a, an example for what you can write up for a homemaking job. So um, on the top left here, yay, bye Alexis. Thank you for joining us. Um, I've listed here um, exactly what you might put if you were a homemaker. So you list the household name. So it's just your last name and that the name of that household. So this person, I put Madeira household. So um, you list the time frame that you worked there, what city you were working there, and your job title is house manager. And then you've got, a, there's a lot of different examples of this online. I just wrote this up kind of as an amalgamation of different examples. But um, a, a person who does homemaking does a ton of stuff. And included in those things are things like managing household, including maintaining multiple schedules, transportation, budgeting, cleaning, personal hygiene stuff, errands, um, also preparing and cooking meals. Uh, you also likely are planning events and activities, uh, vacations, trips to museums. You chauffeur a lot, especially if you have kids um, or like an ill family member to their doctor's appointments and picking up prescriptions, things like that. Um, you also monitor or record symptoms for people who are ill. So if you're taking care of sick kiddos, you've got to watch out for them. It's basically like a, an at-home nursing job. Um, so that's important stuff too. And you also often probably um, help out with homework. So you might put something like assisting with educational tutoring. This is something that people get paid for. And it's a skill that you have now because you have done that at home. Um, so that's just a really great way to outline um, you know, how you would, how, what tasks you might do if you were a homemaker. Um, the other one that I wanted to highlight is internships. So oftentimes um, students come to me with internship uh, experience, but they're not really sure how to write that up. Um, and so I've listed an example here. This is just an education intern. Um, so it's something like, um, oh, and this is, uh, let's see. Sorry, give me two seconds. Um, so I've listed here, Things like developed and implemented activities for museum visitors, collaborated with education department to develop all day history workshop and received award for outstanding intern of the summer for president of the society. So these are just things like you just want to list exactly what it was that you did at that internship because even though you didn't get paid, it's still very important work and it's transferable skills that can be used and utilized at any other company. So that's a really great way to just write that up. Next thing I want to talk to you about is how to handle listing things that identify your religion and politics on your resume. Most of the time, I would let you know that any controversial topic may impact your chances at getting an interview. You never know what your employer's beliefs are. You never know what your um, 
excuse me, what they're going to think of your beliefs and if y'all are going to be on the same page or not. So you do want to be really careful about including this information. However, a lot of the time when you have information like this that identifies your religious or political affiliation, it's because you have legitimate work experience that is related to those things. So if you want to list it on there, you want to make sure that when you do so, you focus on the skills that you learned rather than like the topic, rather than like um, uh, just identifying or saying like what you did to support that religion or politic, uh, uh, political policy. So let me show you some examples of this. Um, say you have some religious work that you want to talk about. Um, say you had, uh, you worked as a volunteer youth minister. So instead of putting something like um, shared the word of God, you want to say something like the third bullet point on here, mentored and supported youth uh, through life struggles, because that is true and also doesn't, is not like wrought with religious information or like religious jargon. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean um, anything about your religion, particularly. It just means that you did that work in that facility. So again, here, this is all entirely based on the skills that you learned and utilized while you were in that job and not so much talking about like your personal beliefs or identifying any of your, um, your personal viewpoints. The same thing with um, political work. So I, I've actually volunteered for, um, <laughs> as I'm about to not do what I told you not to do. Um, I volunteered for a political party when I was an undergrad. It was part of uh, my government um, uh, class that I took. And so listing that on a resume was a little risky for me, but I did the same thing that I wrote up here. So. This is not mine. This is just an example that I wrote. Um, Libertarian Party, um, a volunteer. And this is like just a list of the things that that person might have been responsible for. So assisted with funding requests and grants like fundraising, managed media relations that might have been like managing a Facebook page for the Libertarian Party, um, advise candidates on public policy. So you're really focusing more on those like action items that you did, not so much the um, political messages that you believed in as you worked there. Now, there, an employer might have a question for you, which is inappropriate, by the way, if an employer asks you a question about, hey, why did you work for a faith Christian church? Um, are you a Christian or blah, blah, blah. They're not allowed to ask you those things, but um, it may end up coming up in an interview if it's on your resume. So you need to be prepared to talk about those things um, in a way that um, is safe for you. Um, so, how do I say this? Um, just be careful who you identify yourself to because you never know what the person sitting across from you it believes or, um, or what their viewpoints are. And you don't want to, um, number one, put yourself in danger of losing the job or put yourself in any personal danger if they don't agree with you and they have strong opinions about it. So I guess just my overall um, message there is just just be careful what you disclose. Um, again, this is a touchy subject and it's absolutely something that the Career Center can help you with if you are not sure how to write that up. So that just brings me to my last slide, which is please, 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 if you have any questions or any concerns about any of the topics that we talked about today, make an appointment with us. There is um, different career uh, career consultants for all the different areas and all the different colleges on campus. I may or may not be your career consultant, but you can make an appointment with me if you'd like to, or just reach out to me directly. Um, to make an appointment with career consultants, you use Handshake. So you just go to app.joinhandshake.com forward slash appointments, and then you can sign up for an appointment there, or you can email me directly, and I've got my email on the screen here. Um, thank you to the many of you who stuck around after time. I really appreciate that, but you did not have to. Um, I'll also just pause now for any questions or any thoughts or suggestions, anything that you have. Um, I'll hang out with you for a few minutes. And then um, if you need me to email you any resources, just let me know, put your email in the chat box. Thanks, Tracy. Appreciate your appreciation. Thanks, Mia. Again, we'll be uploading this video to YouTube later. I'm not sure how long it will take though, um, but it will be available to you. And you can head out too if you don't have any questions or anything. Thanks everyone. Thanks for the thank yous. 
Uh, Kayla, to your question about the one page resume, my rule typically is that it, if you are printing out a piece of paper for your resume, um, you can have it to be as long as one page front and back, which equals two pages digitally. Um, so I would try and keep it at less than two pages on a Word document um, or a PDF if you're doing that. I've got Olivia asking for a link to the YouTube video. Yes, ma'am, I will, or yes, person, sorry to assume your gender. Um, I will, um, I'll take note of anybody that leaves their email address um, here in the chat box and make sure to get you a link to that, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Lola. I do have a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, I was wondering how how would you organize it if, like, for example, I did an internship during the summer, but it was just during the summer, and so, but I have like you know other things that other like other jobs I do that are like ongoing. So how do you fit? Do you fit the internship like after the present job that I currently have? Yeah. It, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. You're kind of trying to figure out where you would put that information. Um, right. So in my, so the, it's a little bit different. You can do it in a few different ways. My personal preference is usually just to put your paid work in one section under work experience or professional experience, and then make a new section under intern experience. So um, I mentioned earlier, I'm getting my PhD in counseling and because of that, I have a bunch of different internships that I've worked, and those are really important things to include on my resume so that when I'm applying to a counseling job, they see that I have worked in counseling, I just haven't been paid for it, right? So um, I have an entire section that's devoted only to jobs that are internships, um, and so you can list it like that, and I'm happy to help you kind of set up the formatting for that too. Okay, so then if I, like in my particular circumstance, I was like a stay at home mom for many, many years. And then also I did a lot of, um, I will, I do a lot of volunteer work with my church, planning the events and things like that. So would that then go with the internship under that internship section? Like I, it's kind of different things. So it's kind of hard. I don't know if I need to like have a label for, okay, you know what I mean? I don't know how to, I'm trying to figure out how to like, organize that. I hear that. Okay. So the stay at home mom or the, you know, homemaker position, I would put that under paid work. <laughs> That's just okay. my personal opinion. That's something I feel like every person should get paid for. If they're working at home, that is labor. You're, you know, you're, you're, um, you should be paid for it in my personal opinion. So I would stick that under professional work experience or just work experience. Okay. Um, I would have a separate section for your internships and um, other unpaid work related to your field specifically. And then uh, you also might put a, another section just for your volunteer work specifically. Um, you could also combine volunteer and internship work and just um, uh, just like label it internship and volunteer work or community engagement, um, something like that. Um, I'm also happy to take a look at it specifically for you and we can kind of work out what, what feels like the best way to write that up. Um, it's also going to be important uh, what you choose to include and not include depending on what job you're applying to. So some of that stuff you may be able to take off to save some room on there too. So, um, but yeah, I'd love to take a look at it for you if you would like me to. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions or anything? I see a bunch of emails. I will make sure to take note of those and get that to you as soon as I can. So I have a quick question. So can we meet with you? Like if you want a quick resume review or something, Absolutely. is it possible? Yes, absolutely. Um, let me go back one slide here. Here's, you can either email me directly, although I'm not very good at answering my emails. Like it takes mm -hmm. me a few days. Um, the best way to meet with me is to do an appointment on Handshake. And so the link for that is right here. Let me see if um, I can also type it into the box here so that you. Okay, thank you.
Um, so just follow that link or type that into your search box on your browser and you should be able to make an appointment with me or whoever is your career consultant. So is it like we need to pick uh, like according to our like a graduate role or whatever? Yeah, or... there's some designations. All of us meet with graduate students, but there's different uh -huh. consultants for each different college. So I primarily work with College of Nursing and College of Professional Education. So if you're uh -huh. not under one of those colleges, a different name might show up for you, but we all have the same skills and we can all do the same stuff for you. Yeah, so I like I'm an well, MPHA MBA student, so oh. it comes in a professional, I guess. Yes. Um, oh, actually, okay. no, that would be our business students meet with uh, Emily Harris. So she handles that. that uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate oh, your absolutely. help. Absolutely. Nice. Mm -hmm. Bye. Anyone else before we hop off? I think I'll stay until about 1.10. Hi, I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. A person I've never met before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a question about um, inputting like artifacts into the resume. I'm not sure if you went over it. I came in a little bit late. Mm -hmm. But for example, um, I have worked with ACUE mm -hmm. um, doing an interview with a psychology professor. Um, I was asked to do this and the video is like linked on their website and everything. And um, I actually got paid in means of an Amazon gift card. Nice. Okay. Um, but I did contribute uh, to research as far as like what they do as a company. Yeah. So I was wondering how you would put a piece of like, you know, artifact that's that huge because it is a big accomplishment. Like, yeah. how would you insert that into your resume? So there's a few different ways you can look at that. I know you and I talked earlier. Um, there, one thing you can do is on your CV, which is different from a resume, there's a whole section where you can do things like presentations, um, research work, stuff like that, um, where you would be able to list that. And I'm happy to get, it's a, a pretty intricate process, so I can't go too deeply into it right now, but I'm happy to work with you on that. Um, but for your resume, since it needs to kind of be short and sweet, you might put, um, I might put that under a section for research experience specifically. Um, okay. But again, you, you're going to need to be really brief with it. So we'll have to work on sort of the wording and verbiage that you need to use to make that kind of like a short and sweet um, summary. Um, I'm sure we can come up with something, but uh, yeah, I think it, you might want to work with me or, or whomever on that. Um, okay. But yeah, on a, that's something more commonly seen on a CV because it's longer and more extensive. It's usually right in academic academia so if you're like applying to grad school you need to have a cv um and uh you're on a cv you can kind of be as long-winded as you want to be <laughs> um and so you can put like a full description of what that was why you did it how it contributed to research and in that field and so on so cvs are more like for your you can like input links to like, you know, stuff. Oh, yeah. You could put resume. a link on your resume too. I would say putting a link on there is, is just fine. You could also put it on your LinkedIn profile. So, cause that's sort of a, like a not standard thing that you would see on a resume. And so it may be more appropriate to put it on your LinkedIn profile and then just like say that you did it on your resume. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Happy to help. All right, it's a little past 1, uh, 10, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. If you still have a question for me if you, or if you need anything from me, I'm going to put my email again in the chat box. And, and also just say thank you all so much for joining me and for great questions. And I'm sure I'll see you or talk to you again sometime soon.